Hello, my name is Rachel Tolan. I'm the Director of the Health Professions and Pre-Law Center at Indiana University. I'm very pleased to be able to offer this presentation as part of the NAAHP virtual conference this year. The title of my presentation is Objectification and Theories of Admission as Represented in Pre-Medical Student Social Media Discourse. This presentation focuses on online forums for pre-med students, such as the forum called Student Doctor, and specifically the ways that students engage in objectification in online discussions. I am an anthropologist by training, and I tend to pay attention to how people use language. And like many anthropologists, I often use a method called discourse analysis. Uh, by that, I mean I use a method of looking closely at the language that people use when communicating to see what implicit underlying assumptions are revealed in their dialogue. The idea being that the way that we use language as well as other signs and symbols helps us construct our shared reality. One of the things I've noticed is the way that students engage in objectification in their discussions of medical school admission. And I'm going to explain what I mean by that and show some examples. I'm also going to discuss the way that students theorize about the medical school admissions process. Objectification is a term that is used in many different contexts. Um, there is a great deal of scholarship on objectification in a wide variety of fields, uh, feminist theory, psychology, and psychoanalytic theory, anthropology, and studies of economic processes, capitalism, and consumer and material culture. Scholars ascribe various definitions to objectification. Here, I'm going to define objectification as treating people, concepts, qualities, relationships, or actions like objects in some way. So as an example, um, stating that an applicant has research as the research were an object to be possessed rather than an activity is an example of objectification. Objectification may indeed be a universal rooted in human psychology and language, uh, but scholars note that objectification plays a very significant role in modern consumer cultures where goods take on prominent symbolic value. A related concept is self-objectification. In self-objectification, a person internalizes the perspective of the other, of an external observer. This is after some work by Barbara Fredrickson and Tommy Ann Roberts. Um, in feminist theory, self-objectification has been argued to result in a focus on appearances and a loss of agency, and as a result can be disempowering. Based on my reading of forums, I have identified students engaging in several types of objectification in these discussions. One would be objectification of the attributes of applicants, the example I gave before of I have research. Um, another type of objectification is the objectification of applicants themselves, treating applicants um, much as objects with sets of attributes that would be similar to other objects with the same set of attributes. And I'll show what I mean by this. Uh, but before I go further, I want to say that my point is not that all objectification is bad or necessarily has negative consequences. Um, that's not my point. Um, without using categories that objectify persons into classifications that are actually social constructions, we would not be able to say, for instance, that African American women earn only uh, 62 cents for every dollar that a white man earns in the United States. That is an example of objectification that can be used to advance social justice and show us the impact of social inequality. Uh, but objectification becomes most problematic when it's done without awareness, when it becomes our reality. 
I want to turn now to the online forums that are popular among pre-med students where they discuss issues in how to gain admission to medical school. Uh, most advisors who've been working with students for any period of time will start to hear from students about uh, the things that they read on these forums. Uh, the longest standing and most popular of these forums is Student Doctor. On Student Doctor, students frequently propose theories to one another about how the admissions process works, what admissions committees value, and the relative importance of different features of an application. Some of the participants in this forum also specialize in admissions counseling. One popular thread on Student Doctor is the what are my chances thread. This is the one I'm going to focus on today. On this thread, students post information about themselves and then ask others to comment on whether they think they will be admitted. A participation is voluntary, of course, and essentially students are asking others to judge them and evaluate them. So I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. I'm going to show you some brief excerpts from these discussions that show how students objectify themselves. And I'll show you an excerpt and I'll give you time to read it and think about it. So this is the typical way in which students will offer a profile of themselves, MCAT, GPA, hours of research, shadowing and volunteering, and they'll ask others uh, what they think of their chances of admission. The students reduce themselves to a set of attributes and basically ask, am I enough? The attributes do not really give all that much information, not the depth of information that medical schools use in conducting holistic admissions. Uh, the student is essentially reduced to a bare set of attributes. So here a student expresses some self-doubt, especially with the amount of extracurricular involvement. The student says they feel like nothing stands out and asks for ways to improve their application. Again, there's very little of the qualitative information that a medical school might use in holistic review. So here again, uh, a student expresses some self-doubt while presenting a bare set of attributes. In this case, the response from another participant seems particularly harsh. Your clinical experience is extremely low. Instead of all that shadowing, you should have done more clinical volunteering. I would suggest getting more hours before applying. This is perplexing really, given that the student has significant shadowing experience in a variety of specialties and presumably uh, would likely have a lot of, uh, to say about those experiences. Again, only uh, bare and minimal attributes are presented with little qualitative information, yet another participant on the forum feels they are in the position to cast doubt on the student's admission. Um, unfortunately, this is representative of some of the microaggressions that take place on the forum from time to time. 
So what can we make of this? Uh, what is the theory of admission that underlies these discussions? The thread, what are my chances, rests on a theory that someone could predict the chances of admission just based on the bare attributes of applicants. Underlying these discussion is an assumption that all applicants with the same set of attributes would be interchangeable to medical schools. The agreed upon theory on the forum is that applicants are essentially interchangeable objects, much like commodities that are considered equivalent in a system of exchange. So what is wrong with this theory? Um, there are lots of things wrong with it, but um, it assumes a direct causal relationship between the set of attributes an applicant displays and an offer of admission. Um, it also assumes that the items on a resume are what is important to admissions committees instead of how the applicant has grown through those experiences and how the applicant shows self insight and the ability to reflect on their experiences. The theory also ignores the way that admissions committees pay attention to the subtlety of language that an applicant uses in a personal statement or interview that can convey affect and such qualities as self-awareness or lack of self-awareness or what an admissions committee may perceive as phoniness. It also ignores the way an interview may evaluate an applicant's ability to engage in ethical reasoning. And what produces this kind of theory of admission and this point of view? Um, well, students feel a lot of pressure to set themselves apart, distinguish themselves, and market themselves to admissions committees, because often that's what they have been told that they have to do. If they perceive medical schools to view applicants much like consumer goods, it may be because that is what has been communicated to them. So what are the effects for students? Unfortunately, the pressure to market themselves sometimes overshadows many of the other things that our students do. Uh, concerns about how experiences will appear on an application sometimes takes precedence over what our students actually experience while engaging in those activities that should be contributing to their personal development. And to return to the idea of self-objectification, uh, I would argue that like other forms of self-objectification, these practices have the potential to be very disempowering for students. And for me, this explains the frequent times that students express feeling discouraged about what they have read on the forums. So some final questions. Um, I would ask also, how does this benefit future physicians? And I would also like to return us to the patient who should always be at the center of medicine and ask, uh, do these practices have any benefits for patients? Is objectifying medical school applicants beneficial in some way for their future patients? Uh, I would argue that it is not. So to close, what can we do? Um, I would suggest that you watch for signs of objectification in how the admissions process is being represented to students and try to shift from the language of having to the language of experiencing to encourage deeper reflection on the experiences students have while preparing for health profession school. We can make students aware when we notice objectification and self-objectification and emphasize they are much more than a consumer good to be marketed to medical schools. And we can shift the focus to patients who should be at the center of all we do. So I'd like to thank the organizers of the conference for giving me this opportunity to share this presentation. Uh, thank you for viewing it and I hope you enjoy the rest of the conference.